The upcoming film Asteroid City is a comedy drama that stars a ton of actors and actresses that most of us know. Scarlett Johansson, Jason Schwartzman, Tom Hanks, and Margaret Robbie. Releasing in just a few days in the US, today we wanted to go over the behind the scenes moments and see how all these actors came together and where the idea of this film came from. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Did you tell her we were, we, we were again? Okay. No, I didn't think of that. I should have, or just, I didn't think of that. I designed this equipment, I lobbied for congressional support, I cultivate dubious relationships in the private sector and necessary compromise. Plus, I sit up there in my observatory every night. But before we get into more of these moments, some trivia for you. Jason Schwartzman stars in this film, which he also did in the creator Wes Anderson's first film. What was that comedy film in 1998? Leave your guesses in the comments down below and stick around to the end of the video to find out if your answer was correct. In addition to being a movie about acting, Asteroid City is an acting showcase. Anderson regular Jason Schwartzman plays a grieving parent while Anderson newbie Tom Hanks plays the grieving father-in-law. Scarlett Johansson plays a glamorous movie star and Brian Cranston narrates the TV show. Development of this film started back in September of 2020, when Wes Anderson decided to write and direct this film. The film's title was revealed by Bill Murray to be Asteroid City at the BFI London Film Festival in October of 2021. What? Did you tell her we were rehearsing again? And even though he was the one who announced this, later in July of 2022, it was revealed that Murray actually will not be appearing in this film as initially reported as a result of being sick from the pandemic before he could shoot his scenes. So I guess rather than waiting till he was okay to shoot, they just recasted him. So we do have some information regarding where the film was shot. Wes Anderson may be one of our most recognizable and celebrated American filmmakers, but he very rarely makes his films in the United States. This is the first time since Moonrise Kingdom that Anderson has told a story firmly set in America, be it the American West or in the film's superstructure, the New York theater world. It's today again. Up. Yeah, just like that, one more like that. Good. And it's today again. The Western elements of Asteroid City are not supposed to resemble reality. During an exclusive interview with Vanity Fair, we get to hear from the production designer of the mechanics that went into it and how they were able to create this realistic physical environment. This was a, a base sketch that uh, Alexios Krisikos did with me. And this is a conversation with Wes about the shape, but also the specifics and the look and feel and the level of detail and how, how aged is it. And a lot of these things that you're seeing in here 
come from very specific reference points. He walks us through the different perspective that he has with Wes in terms of the visuals and even some of the directing and how the audience sees certain things and seeing from more of a straight on point of view instead of seeing it from an angle or how it usually is seen in a lot of films. And then go back into the room, Bob. Head count! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Plus Libby, Marge, and me all present. And when you see the trailer in all of its scenes, you can see that everything is straightforward with the camera, either facing the actors or directly to their side, which probably made the acting all the more difficult considering you usually don't look towards the camera. Uh, that's true. It's out there. Something. The meaning of life. Maybe there is one. You took his picture, Dad. I, I didn't think Just of that. I didn't think of that. I should have. Now it's too late. Anyway because I've admitted everything. Wes Anderson explicitly states that he wanted a slightly exaggerated desert. And if you go to the real place, you aren't really going to get that exaggeration. You're just going to get reality. And with each feature, he pushes his style further away from reality. And finally, the awarding of the annual Hickenlooper Scholarship after Monday's banquet lunch. I'll start by presenting the commemorative medal. The pressure is immense. No, um, I'm always very thankful and surprised if anybody calls me for work, but particularly if it's the same person, um, you know, I have no expectations at all. And speaking on the works of Wes Anderson, we get to hear from the cast regarding what it was like working with him. It was great. I was, it was such an, un I was in the middle of the quarantine time and so, it was basically the best call I, re yeah. I received. Um, it just felt hopeful and like, yeah. so, you know, there was something to look forward to, you know, this kind of like North Star thing. We also wanted to give a shout out to our Marvel Monday winner. If you guys didn't know, we ask a challenging Marvel related trivia question over on our community tab. If you answer it correctly, you get a chance to have your answer featured here in one of our videos. I began by um, uh, describing the various properties of the astronomical ellipses. Go! Go! Asteroid City has exceptional cinematography and production design. Anderson accompanies rich character development with corresponding sets and backgrounds. Asteroid City will undoubtedly delight Anderson's fan base. <laughs> There's a familiar comfort seeing his tried and true veteran ensemble in a bonkers situation. During an interview with Scarlett Johansson, she explained what her thoughts were when jumping into this project being in a Wes Anderson film. I was just excited to see what the world is going to be. Yeah. Um, and I had a little bit of sort of knowledge going into it, like it's this kind of you know, 19, late 1950s, um, sort of Area 51 kind of vibe. During the premiere of the movie, Jeff Goldblum even talked about walking on stilts for the movie, which is interesting. I remember this day I had to, you'll see at the end of the movie, I'm just in it for a, for a, a, a brief second, but it's me under this, uh, under this mask that they brilliantly created. This is the first time that Wes Anderson had a film that was set in the 1950s, so it was fun for him to explore this and where his inspiration came from. Good morning, Mr. Steve. Can I choose preference, please? Apple, orange, or tomato? Where'd they go? Everybody. Of course, I understand. The president may be quarantined after all at midnight pizza. <laughs> He stated, it has to do with a Euro take on the American West. I thought a lot about Wim Wenders. I've always loved his interpretation of the landscape and the people in it.
We even get to hear from Brian Cranston about working on the film and the challenges of when they were filming as Wes was very specific on what he wanted and how he wanted the film to be viewed by others. It's also, it's very challenging to do the work because he has, he's so specific on what he wants. Um, and artistic frustration is inherent in the work itself. You I'll stole your right projects! Now. And we'll leave during that. Okay, so we'll go that way. So I'll, so I'll come back in and as far as the answer to our trivia question, it was the film Rushmore that was the film that Jason Schwartzman starred in. But we wanted to turn this around to you guys. What do you think about this new film and are you familiar with Wes Anderson's previous films? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on for more videos just like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys.